When the business defines a service level agreement, or SLA, there are likely to be deadlines associated. Perhaps overnight processing must be completed prior to the start of the next business day. Within AAI, an SLA can be visualised as a group of workload automation jobs or objects that all form part of what we call an AAI job stream. There are several components to a job stream. Before we learn how to create a job stream, please allow me a minute to briefly describe two key components, the target job and the critical path. The target job is the starting block, the foundation that AI will use to gather data and provide SLA monitoring and forecasting of the business process. Target jobs will often have a deadline. It's this deadline that will form the basis of the alerting thresholds that in turn will allow the transition from a reactive, object-based monitoring to a more proactive, business-based model. Once the target job has been specified, AAI will determine its upstream dependencies, jobs that must run in order for the target job to be executed. When the target job's predecessors are discovered, AAI will build the job stream, identifying and highlighting the jobs that directly impact the target job completion time. This becomes the critical path. The object-orientated nature of atomic automation means that objects or jobs can be reused in multiple applications or workflows. They can also be used multiple times within the same workflow. With this in mind, accurate selection of the target job and its parentage is key. This class will help you to understand how to capture the necessary information from atomic automation before creating the job stream within AAI. The expenses application in this automic environment is split between three nations, UK and Ireland, France and Finland. There is also a regional application for EMEA. Each branch has its own processing that eventually comes together in the regional process. It's this regional process that contains my target job. The regional workflow contains external dependencies, one per nation. Let's look at these a little closer. The target job is the final object in the application. I'll make a note of the job name and its sequence number in the workflow. Next, I'll record the workflow name. Then, I locate and note the schedule object that's associated to the workflow. Finally, I take a note of the sequence number within the schedule object that is related to the workflow containing the target job. I now have all the details I need to create the job stream within AAI. Now I have the atomic automation information that I need, I will log into AAI and create the job stream. In this class, I'll create the job stream within the Analysis tab of AAI. Job streams can also be created in the Admin tab. I have already created a business area called Expenses. I will add my new job stream to this business area by right-clicking and selecting Add Job Stream. Now I need to refer to the information recorded earlier. I'll use the ends with search and enter the final characters of the job name, followed by a forward slash and the sequence number of the task in the workflow. When I click on Find, 
I am presented with two possible jobs. Note the difference in the parentage. Both contain the workflow name, but only one contains the name of the schedule object and the schedule sequence number. This is the target job that I need to select. With the target job selected, I must now give my job stream a meaningful name and determine whether forecasting is needed. When I expand the settings, I am able to adjust the business area within which the job stream is located, apply trimming, provide a description and specify alert criteria. In the advanced settings, I will adjust the job stream run starting job. By ignoring an outermost container, AAI will present the job stream without the schedule or JSCH object. Trimming provides the ability to remove tasks from the job stream. A description of the job stream may be added here. Finally, alert criteria can be set. I will select late, NPTF or not predicted to finish and exceeded for my job stream. Descriptions of each alert type and further configuration settings can be found here. I'll now click OK to have AAI create the job stream. I select my job stream to open the most recent run and expand the critical path. Notice how the red critical path items cross workflows. This is due to external dependencies within the Atomic Automation System. When I right click on the job stream name, I am able to edit it directly or to delete it. Right now, I wish to amend the late criterion. AAI applies a system calculated late criterion by default. This is based on historical run data. I will override this setting and enter a duration based setting of 40 minutes instead. The Gantt chart now shows a red vertical dashed line. This is the late time for this job stream. I have now created an Atomic Automation job stream within AAI. Thank you for watching.